Hello, hello, lovely butterfly. Welcome back to my channel. It's France. I got this stash for a grand total of $37. And I wanted to see how well I could journal with these. Is the money that we spend on all our art stuff worth it? So first let's unpack these and see what it is we have. The first thing I'm opening is acrylic paint and it looks very childish. Um, by the feel of it. Um, some of the colors do look okay. We'll see how they react on the paper. I got these two glues and then I got these uh, brushes as well because I kill a lot of brushes. I have to admit I'm not very good at taking care of them. So I thought let's see how these cheapy thingies work and it's not starting well because unpacking it, I realized that that big brush had an issue. Uh, but it says professional. These are professional paintbrushes. <laughs> so let's see just how professional they are if we can get them out of there. Apparently you need um, a brain to get it open. So these are all the brushes that I have. Usually I don't like these long brushes. I like the short ones better, but this is what they had. And well, this one has a serious issue and that's the one that I would probably use the most. So, okay, that's one bubble that's burst right there. Okay, that's really stuck together. I don't know what it is. I don't know what happened to this brush, but it's not looking good or feeling good. Okay, then we have these paint markers, which should be something like Posca pens. Um, I've always hesitated to get color Poscas. Maybe this can get me over the edge. So I thought, well, maybe I can have some fun with these and see if I actually do like paint pens that have color in them. The nib looks very cheap, like super cheap. And then nothing is happening. I know it takes some time for the paint to come down, but usually you can like see something coming from the very beginning, even if it takes some time to go to the point of the nib, but nothing is happening here. Like nothing at all. So let's speed it up because I've been pressing like forever. So I thought, let's try another one. Maybe this one will work. So I can hear the little ball rolling inside, but nothing is happening. So I checked the mechanism, which looks okay, but nothing is happening. Let's try. Oh, something's happening. Yes, finally. The thing that is coming out doesn't look like paint. It actually looks like a thicker ink than like paint. And the pink one does look a bit reddish. What I do like though is that with that bullet nib you can really really make a difference in lines. Um, so yeah, that looks interesting. They are more or less stable when you add water to them, but not completely. But moving on to the paint, this is the blue paint and it doesn't look like paint. It looks like a glaze. I mean, so I took the box again to check. Did I read this? correctly or not. Yes, it does say acrylic paint. It doesn't say acrylic glaze. So I'm giving it another shot, trying to apply it a bit thicker, which is just impossible. The thing is so slick that I cannot get it down in a thicker layer. Let's try with a palette knife, which only makes it worse. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that is going to be interesting to get some color on the paper. 
like, okay. Let's check the coverage with another color. So I took out the red one um, to see how much coverage I could get out of this glazy paint. So same thing with the red one. It's just impossible to cover anything up. But you do get some kind of interesting purple when you apply the colors on one another. But coverage is non-existent. Let's see how it dries when using the heat gun. I dried it like forever. It just didn't want to dry. The glaze did dry immediately, but the paint didn't. Moving on to the gesso. Um, so first I wanted to see if there was a seal. Well, first I wanted to open the bottle, which didn't work. But there was no seal, so that is not a good sign. That means that your paint can already arrive half dried when it gets to you. And then, okay, first time I get gesso all over me. And this will happen each and every time that I open this bottle. You cannot open it without having any gesso coming out. So let's see how the gesso works and it smells horrible. It smells like a cheap PVA glue. Terrible. Gesso is not supposed to smell like that. The texture is very smooth. Um, it doesn't look like gesso. It doesn't feel like gesso. So let's see how it spreads out with a paintbrush. And I shouldn't have done this on white paper because you cannot see anything. <laughs> I could see what I was doing, but that doesn't help you much. But I could already see that the coverage would be non-existent with this one as well. As you can see, no coverage. I was not applying the gesso in a thin layer. This was already a pretty thick layer. Well, with a regular gesso, with my gesso, the ones that I use regularly, I would have had some coverage here. And with this one, well, it's very, very thin. This still doesn't mean that these products won't work. It still means that you have to adapt what it is you want to do to what those products can do for you. So I had to think about how I, how I would use my go-to techniques with how these products were working. And this still was not dry. Yeah, I checked again. <laughs> I just couldn't believe, but it, it didn't say anything. It, it, there was nothing else on the box. I mean, it just said acrylic paint and that's it. So I decided to check that one as well um, to see what it said on the label. And it, it just says gesso, nothing else. I have to admit that I also had a look as to where it was made because that might give me a hint to where it was coming from, but nope. Uh, the one said made in China and the other one said nothing. It only said that it was imported by a Dutch company. Moving on to the glue, let's see how it sticks. I got the two glues just in case the first one wouldn't work so that I would still have something else to glue on. So again, no seal, again, a very strong smell. Um, not a pleasant one unless you're planning on getting high on glue, which is not something I recommend. So let's see how well it sticks. I did give it a moment. I didn't want to rush. I didn't want to play it fair. I didn't want to keep it clean in case I wouldn't be able to open it up again later on. Uh, 
I could feel the moist through the paper. I could feel that it was pretty wet despite the very small amount of glue that I had used. Okay, I'm making some space so that I can get some actual art channeling done. And the spread that I'm going to do is nothing but techniques that you've seen me use many times before so that you have a reference point. And that is how well this thing was sticking. I thought, let's give it some more time. Let's put it back down. Let's leave it on the side and we'll see later on. So on to art channeling. I am cheating. I am journaling in my art journal, which means that I'm journaling on the good paper. I'm not going to add that hurdle to the... So I'm checking the color um, and I was thinking, okay, I could mix this one to get a nicer color. And then I thought that applying it with my brayer would be interesting, but my brayer would just slip over the paint instead of pick it up. It was very, very hard to get it on my brayer. And then of course, as we saw uh, with the testing, it's a glaze, it's not a paint. It's, it's so sheer that you can hardly see it on the paper. Doing the same thing with a more pinkish color so that I have some kind of gradient on the paper going on. The cool thing is that as it's not sticking to my brayer, well, I don't have to clean my brayer. <laughs> it's already clean. There's no paint on there. So I decided to see how it would work if I would apply it with my palette knife. And well, as it's still a glaze, it's very, very, very light on the paper. I was expecting a very cheap binder with a very little amount of dye, not even pigments, but dye. But this is even less than what I was expecting it to be. And then again, because of the amount of binder in there, it takes like forever to dry. <laughs> no matter how thin this layer is, it just it takes like forever to dry. So I decided to create some teal, mixing blue and green, and I got a very, very dirty teal, dusty teal. And no matter what I did, it just wouldn't become a <laughs> pretty teal. So, well, let's just go with the dusty teal then anyway. It's, it's what it is, but I wanted to have this contrast with, with the warm and the cold colors. Again, just applying it in the same way, um, doing what it is I do. Another thing that I like to do, of course, is making splatters. So I added some water and then I tried to mix it. And I tried some more. And then I tried with the paintbrush, but it just wouldn't mix. So I decided to just go ahead and try to get those splatters on like that. Those are not splatters like I usually do. Those are actual paint bubbles. And then this happened. And yes, I'm laughing hard. <laughs> professional paintbrush. This has never been used before, ever, and it's already falling apart. When I got my act back together, I decided to clean up this dusty teal and look, it's leaving a chase on my craft sheet. No other products ever leaves a chase on my craft sheet. Uh, but going in with the baby wipe did the trick and it just came off. But normally wet paint, it just comes off. I mean, it doesn't leave anything on the craft sheet. So 
Um, I was laughing, but it was a struggle. I mean, the challenge was to make an art challenge spread, so it was a challenge. Okay, let's try to add some pink splatters here. So again, some of that paint and then trying to mix it. And I was already like, it's not mixing. It, nothing is happening. It just sits in the water. So I decided to get the camera closer so that you, I don't know if you can see it, but the paint is just sitting in the water. It's very strange. And I really, really had to work with my palette knife. Despite the fact that it's a very, very small amount of paint with quite some water, it was, I mean, I had to really work to mix it in there. After putting my camera back in place, I forgot to put it back on while I applied the splatters, but as you can see, I got some kind of splatters on the spread. And then I decided to go in with those paint markers, which took the best out of my patience because I just couldn't get it to work. If this was my regular stash, this thing, I would have tested its aerodynamics. It would have <laughs> flown through my studio because I don't have the patience for this when I'm when I'm working in my art channel. I mean, I want my flow to go. This is sped up 400%. This gives you an idea of how long I spend trying to get paint out of the, of the thing, but eventually it worked. And then I tried to see if I could blend it with some water and my professional paintbrush and I could smear it, but not blend it. So I had to keep that in mind while going back to my art channel. So I had to use it as such and not try to blend anything together. So blending the gray and the turquoise was not an option. I took out my honeycomb stencil. This is the large version and then decided to just do some doodling using the stencil. After the paint leaving a trace on my craft sheet for a moment, I was a bit, bit stressed about cleaning the stencil, but it came off just very, very easily and very nicely, so no problem there. And I did like the effect of uh, the paint through the stencil here. One of the things that I like to do normally is then to push things back with gesso, and I did the exact same thing here, and it did work pretty okay. Um, despite for the smell. I mean, the smell, seriously, I will not be using this gesso ever again for anything just because of the smell. And this is the third time that I'm opening this bottle and this is the third time that I'm getting gesso from me. <laughs> It took like forever to dry. I mean, there's so much binder in there that, oh, gosh, it's like drying glue actually, instead of drying gesso. I'm going back in with some more color, just like I would do, well, just like I've already done on a lot of spreads. Uh, so I'm mixing up the same color again. Again, it's the same paint to get it on my prayer and then applying it over the gesso. And it's so sheer that you can hardly see anything, but then, Another thing started to happen. Everything started to stick together as if I had applied glue instead of gesso. Um, 
the paper was sticking to my brayer and then the paint, instead of sticking on the paper, started to move around. I mean, it, it gave me a very grungy effect, which was, which was pretty cool, but that is not what I was going for. So I thought, well, if that is how it's going to be, let's go with that. So I insisted and created some more of that grungy effect that I was not actually going for. Um, yeah, I was going for something smooth. It decided to be something grungy, which is okay. Till a certain point. I took a long time to heat set this to make sure that it would stay in place. I don't want these shifted paint parts to go anywhere when working on top of the paper. So I heat set it for a long time and then wiped it to make sure that nothing was moving anymore. Um, and then I was a bit stuck because <laughs> this grungy thing was not what I was going for. So I was like, what do I do now? Apparently circles was the way to go, but not just yet. And then I didn't really know what kind of circles I wanted to do, because in my head I didn't have a grungy background like this. So to give myself some time to think and to yet still move on, I decided to take my uh, Unipen pen out and doodle around what I already did with the uh, paint markers. And I know this pen was not in the stash, I was not allowed to use it, but I needed a break here from the projects that wouldn't really do what I wanted them to do. So I wanted one tool that would actually exactly do what I wanted it to do. Okay, after this little break of a pen that actually worked the way I wanted it to work, I decided that I didn't want to try to do a gradient because that is what I do. So I took my circle stencil again, I mixed some black and white paint to have that gray, and then I wanted to see if I could create a gradient. <clears throat> yeah, what was I thinking? What ever made me believe that this might be a good idea? So I did what I usually do. I applied it with my finger and it didn't work. So I thought, let's apply it in a thicker way with some help of my palette knife. And it still wasn't working and it started to look like crap. And then I thought, let's lift as much of that up again as I can. This was interesting. Um, let's do something else. And I know you might be thinking, oh, but those little dots in the paint could be interesting. Yeah, no, those reminded me of my struggle. Let's add some gray splatters or not, because it's not mixing. I gave it a lot of time to dry and then I opened my gesso using a piece of kitchen roll so that I would not get gesso all over me. <laughs> and I went back in with some gesso because I still wanted to have some kind of nice looking circle on there and not that I don't know what thing that I had so far. With the gesso, it was starting to look a bit better. Um, and it was pretty okay to apply. It took me longer than it usually does, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And then again, trying to add some splatters and with the gesso, it did mix up uh, a bit more easier than it did with the paint. It took again like forever to dry, but that is something else. And then I spotted this color, which actually looked like nickel as a gold. So I thought maybe I can add a rusty effect to it, but nope, it, no, it looked 
the right color in the bottle, but not once it was out of the bottle. So off you go. Bye bye. Moving on. Well, before I have to dry it, of course, again, no matter how thin it is, we have to dry it. So I decided to hide it again with some black because, yeah, no, I cannot have that on the paper. It's still my journal, so despite the fact that this is um, a challenge, this is still in my journal, so I still want it to look okay. And this was going down well as well. Using a card and then that paint to add some details on the spread, that was working well with this paint. It had the nice um, texture for that. I knew, again, it would take a long time to dry, but at least it was looking the way I wanted it to look. I wanted to make the spread look like me. I mean, this is still my art channel, like I said. So I decided to go in with my number stamps and some regular archival ink and just add these details, just like on my regular art channeling spreads. And it made me realize how good it feels to have all these products that actually do what you expect them to do. Um, and then I took out this cat, which is from my Cryptacular stamp set. I stamped it on the matching die cut. This is something that I did for another spread and I'm just reusing it for this spread. I took this uh, sticker from my new sticker sheets, which are the big words, which is now available on my web shop. And I placed the cat on a piece of washi tape and the sticker. And the sticker actually says, I'm not really here <laughs> because I thought that was really matching the content of this spread. I'm using the paint markers to colorize the stickers, so just mixing some of that paint from the paint marker with water. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the cat. So this was interesting because it gave me a very, very sheer color, which is nice. On the other hand, I had to apply so many layers to have just a little bit of color going on that it's just like... Hmm. I'd rather have a product that, that needs a bit more water to dilute and that I can apply in one go than to have to do this over and over and over again to have a little bit of color going on. But like I said at the beginning, I did like the fact that this bullet nib gave me possibilities and I wanted to remember that. So I just decided to doodle around um, the spread just to <laughs> give a bit of recognition to <laughs> what this pen can do um, in a positive way. That circle, though, it was it was poking my eyes out. I mean, there's no... Ah, gradient, no shading, no whatsoever, and I needed to change that. So I went for the product that did work best, which was the gesso. Uh, well, best for what I did today. I don't think you can stretch it that much further. Uh, I don't think like a bubble technique would work with this kind of gesso or uh, a crackle technique. Well, maybe a crackle technique might work, <laughs> but not in a way that you would want it. Um, and then I did the same thing with the black paint for the bottom and maybe I should not have done that because, well, usually doing this kind of shading is, it's, it's like I can do this almost with my eyes closed because I'm very used to do this. I've done it a lot. Um, I know how to do it. But with this product, it was like, huh, let's try this. So oh, maybe if I do that or maybe if I, oh. It was a struggle and the reason I'm insisting is that if this is the kind of products that you buy it means that you're limiting yourself to what it is you will be able to do with them in your art channeling unless you only use techniques that you really 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 rock and master and even so it's going to be very hard to have these products do what it is you want them to do. So my advice would be to 
save a little money and then buy a better product than to buy these because they will actually make you think that you cannot art. That is how hard they are to use. Even doing techniques that I know I can do in a very easy way. Hmm. These products are making it very, very hard. And I think it will, it will take down your mojo to take on this fight to get some art channeling done. So I do not recommend these products. That doesn't mean that I recommend all the products that are super duper expensive. This is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is go for a bit more expensive from a reliable brand. I think that that says, that says it better. And meanwhile, I'm still struggling trying to get this circle done in the way that I want to have it. Um, I laughed a lot. I mean, I really laughed a lot while making this spread, but not in a good way. I mean, I was laughing with the products. That is not how it's supposed to work, right? Um, and while I'm doing this, I realize that my circle doesn't even look like a circle anymore, but that's okay. I'll fix that in the next step. If only I could get that shading uh, more or less okay. Well, that's the best it's gonna get. I guess. So moving on, I'm going back in with my circle stencil and uh, my Unipin pen. I, uh, I I took pens that I could trust. I mean, I needed, I needed some trust here <laughs> to finish this thing. So I just took my Unipin pens in a variety of uh, thickness, gave the circle a little, yeah, doodling around it, and then my date stamp. And I decided that this was done. Enough. It was enough. Okay, so I hope you liked today's experiment. Um, this is what came out of it, and it does look pretty okay if you don't know what's behind it, which was a lot of struggle. A huge thank you to my patrons who made this video possible. I'll see you back here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses. <laughs>